First things first, Michael, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Um, I might pronounce this incorrectly, but the Tsuras, what made you uh, fell, uh, fall in love with it? Um, I, I, was, we, I was with a band touring through Athens, Greece, mm -hmm. and um, we had a day off. And we, were, we were just eating. We were just eating at a cafe, like out, out on the, out in the street, and a little, uh, like a little gypsy boy came up, like playing for change, playing mm -hmm. the Shiraz. Um and it, I don't know, it just, it sounded really great. I've always liked the bazooki, and it's kind of in the same family, just a smaller version. And um, yeah, just later in the day, I was walking by a, walking by a shop, and they were selling one for cheap. And I just, yeah, I just bought it and told myself I would put it, to justify buying it, I'd put it on the next record somewhere. Yeah, well, was it immediately that connection with, uh, okay, I'm going to try and put this on the next record? Yeah, kind of. Plus, I just, it, it was just really fun to play, and it sounds, it sounds cool, and it's kind of small, you know, it's like, it's like there. Um, so nice to just, like, walk around the house with and play. I just, yeah, I just like, I like finding and trying to figure out how to play new instruments. It's fun. Well, you play a lot of instruments on the record yourself. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, with this instrument, does it take you a while to, to get acquainted to it, to, to be able to use it for the record? Um, some more than others. I mean, this instrument, I, it was just, uh, just playing a simple, just playing a simple line, and uh, it didn't take too long. I, did, I didn't learn how to play it properly, mm -hmm. of course, like traditionally, but um, yeah, it just, just playing around on it for a while. And you know, if you play, if you learn how to play guitar, then certain instruments are easier, like bass is easy to pick mm -hmm. up and other stringed instruments kind of make more sense. So um, yeah, but, not, not, I, didn't, I didn't suffer over trying to learn it or anything. But did, did you look up the way it was traditionally played just to get a sense of the instrument? Yeah, yeah, I like just YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> and they, they're, the, the people who play it well, is, it just sounds amazing. I'm, you know, nowhere near that, mm. but just, it's fun to play just how I want to play it too. And well, with other instruments that, that qu are quite different than again, guitar or string bass instruments, like horns, uh, that there's a trumpet uh, on the record as well. So how do you kind of learn, uh, were you able to play uh, those instruments already? Or? Well, I, a lot of people, the press release was a little unclear mm. in that I didn't, I didn't play trumpet, I didn't play okay. French horn. I played saxophone, so right. that's one thing. Um, but for like, yeah, the trumpet and the, the French horn, I had some people who actually knew what they were doing come in. <laughs> um, but it was interesting learning how to, how to write for those instruments, mm -hmm. you know, like where, you know, you have to learn stuff like the register and where the most comfortable parts are on, as far as the range and, you know, um, what they're capable of and what they're not as instruments. And yeah, I've been, it was, I would love if I could play them, but it was interesting at least learning how to write to, for them. Was this the reason, because I, I read that press release on your website that, that you uh, didn't even have other people play on, on it as well. So yeah. um, was this the main reason just because you weren't uh, yourself proficient at those instruments to have them play, or was there another reason as well? Um, yeah, that's the main reason. I mean, I like, I like playing whatever I can on the record. If mm -hmm. I can play it well enough to have it sound good, then I'll do it. Just mostly because it's it's fun for me, and also because um, it's the easiest. It's the easiest way to like, I don't have to translate to somebody else what I want to hear and then teach them and go through that process. Right. Even though like, I know, I know dozens of better guitar players than me that are just friends of mine, you know, in every instrument, like drummers and bass players. But um, yeah, it's just, I like not having to translate the thought during the recording process if mm -hmm. I can avoid it. And then when it comes to the, the live shows, then how do you translate what you put on a record to, to a, a live setting? Um, yeah, it especially as 
the records get a little more elaborate as mm -hmm. far as orchestration and arrangement. Um, the the live the live bit of it will always like be a compromise in one way or another, and um, yeah, it's just like it's teaching the band mostly from from the record, or they we just learn the basic elements of it, and then um, whoever I'm playing with will you know add their own touch to whatever mm -hmm. they're playing. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting. It definitely changes. Um, from the record recorded version, and it changes whoever is in my band. My band has been like rotating a lot. Right. So, so, so when you, um, well, for instance, if we if we take uh, the, the the upcoming tour, um, would this, would you change the songs beforehand, or would you kind of figure out how to play them? Uh, would the songs kind of evolve as as you go on? Um, yeah, we de they definitely will evolve sometimes and. You know, you just get into a room with whoever you're playing with, and everyone uh, figures it out together. Okay. And you change what you need to change, or you adapt parts where you need to. And um, yeah, it's just kind of a process of seeing, like, figuring out what will sound best in a live setting versus the recording setting. Okay. And then, uh, I also want to go back quickly to to uh, what you mentioned earlier about arranging instruments you aren't. Um, well, let's let's put it to aren't too familiar with. Yeah. So, um, what kind of things did you discover? Because you have a, a degree, I believe, in in music. Yeah. So, what did you discover about arranging when, when these other instruments came into the to the equation? Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was really helpful having having um, like more of a formal education about some of the things, especially mm -hmm. like arranging for like the string quartet like I learned you know I, I studied a lot while I was there and you know there's certain things you should or shouldn't do and certain you just learn what sounds best for arranging for that kind of thing and then taking that and adapting it to my own songs and to like you know a situation where you wouldn't usually have that kind of like a string quartet and like mm -hmm. a rock based song or whatever. So yeah, you just kind of, it's just kind of like a process of figuring out what sounds good, what sounds bad, and like how to, how to best, how to best incorporate it. And it's really, it's really fun and interesting to me. It like, it keeps it, it keeps like the songwriting um, and recording process really, really fresh and new and exciting. With that in mind, um well, you mentioned that they're having kind of like a string uh, quartet or something, uh, having these elements that aren't naturally in rock music that excites you. So mm -hmm. can you give me one like, example on the record that f for you was kind of maybe a challenge or something that, that you weren't sure was going to work? Um, yeah. Um, they like that, I mean, there's there's a lot of little sections in mo in a lot of the songs okay. that have big arrangements that were kind of challenging, like the the track that I threw the the Giras in at mm -hmm. the end. That was I I really didn't think that would work until like way after I, you know, until basically I recorded it and heard it back in the studio, and was thinking about like cutting it and stuff. But um, yeah, because that was that was a strange, you know, instrument I'm totally not familiar with, mm -hmm. and um, the rest of it, like, yeah, just um, just certain songs, balancing out how to get thing, how to get a whole bunch of elements to sound good when maybe there's like a really loud guitar underneath, mm -hmm. you know, just filling in space and finding where finding like where and how to have everything stand out of each other and not just like sound like a, a mush, a mush, um, so. But th this idea of, of having spaces filled in, because uh, I think it's in the bio where it says you kind of wanted this big sound or, so, so did you have this idea of, of or, or this sound already in mind for the record before you started composing and writing? Um, yeah, I mean, I knew I, I knew I wanted to 
I knew generally that I, I wanted to try to, to um, add some instruments that were a little more unfamiliar to me. Um, but then it was really just going through song by song and um, like hearing it in my head and hearing a part that like maybe that maybe that would sound good with a trumpet, you know, instead of a guitar or, you know, strings instead of a piano line and just, yeah, just going through song by song and finding where, where it's appropriate. But just, just based off like what I've been listening to and what I've been, what's excited me about making music recently, I, I definitely knew I wanted to try to push myself to, um, to write for a lot of things and have it be a pretty, a pretty, um, what's the word, I lost the word. You know, a pretty varied and pretty uh, uh, diverse record musically and sound-wise.